Welcome back. The Department of State Security today denied stopping the former Central Bank of Nigeria governor, Mr. Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, from traveling to Saudi Arabia at the weekend. Reports say Mr. Sanusi was supposed to be on a trip to Saudi Arabia for the lesser hatch, but was prevented from boarding a Turkish airline flight on Saturday night. As a suspended former governor, Mr. Sanusi had been checked in but was going through final immigration checks before his passport was allegedly confiscated. This has, however, been denied by the DSS spokesperson, Ms. Marilyn Olga. While the police command in Kogi State has taken custody of suspects arrested in a raid on an illegal naval training school in, by the Joint Military Task Force, Commandant of the NNS Lugard, Navy Commodore Shua Abdurrahman Muhammad, handed over four suspects to the state police commissioner, Seydou Madawaki, at the police headquarters in Lokoja. He said the task force had completed its own part of the operation and was handing the suspects over to the police for investigation and prosecution. It's a matter of esprit de corps as the police in Kogi State plays host to the Navy. The Naval Command has not come empty-handed either. They brought along trophies of their raid on the Merchant Navy illegal training camp, including weapons, equipment, and uniforms. So on behalf of uh, the Chief of Naval Staff, I have a hand over the register that contains the names of the trainees and their funds and locations to you for further action. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perhaps the ultimate prize are the suspects they arrested. Where are the suspects? And some information that justify the raid on the institution. These are never ranks. Maybe. This lieutenant and this commodore's rank. So, much and maybe there's no use of never ranks. The highest you can get on what a ship is a navy. And a uh, merchant navy captain, uh, captain of a ship, are supposed to train in handling ship that drivers and keep watch system, not to train in weapon handling. Command will do a very, very thorough investigation into this matter and ensure that all the suspects involved are properly prosecuted before the law court. And I will want to add here that already the commandant was charged to court by this command. That was on 23rd October 2013. The case is still pending in court, and the case is coming off on 13th of this month. So he was released on bail, so he his lawyer. As for the suspects, they claim they had the rule pulled over their eyes concerning the institution's legitimacy. We never knew that it was illegal, even though for the fact that they came and rescued us and and told us everything about it that we get to understand that it was illegal. Nobody knew. They were coming to tell us every day that the bill is still in process and they were bringing uh, documents for us to really show us that the bill is in the National Assembly and they are working on it. I wish the uh, federal government will still look deep into our matter and know that we are just good uh, citizens searching for job. And I wish we can even from now be deployed to either a good organization that is well recognized since the decision has been given to us now that is illegal. The question still lingering is what was the true motive behind establishing the bogus Merchant Navy School? Perhaps the police investigations might uncover the truth. We'll take you back now to the emotional uh, display by, Pres by the First Lady, Mrs. Patience Jonathan, on hearing news of uh, the latest on the abduction of the girls from Chibok Secondary School in Borno State. Uh, earlier today, we learned that uh, the state's commissioner for education, Musa Kubo, told the First Lady the school failed to act on the directive requesting maximum security for schoolgirls writing their examinations. A First Lady, Patience Jonathan, was, re was reported to have broken down in tears uh, after he acknowledged that the examination board insisted that they provide adequate security before the exams, but that the school failed to provide that security. A meeting took place this evening where the First Lady also found out that no standby generator was provided for the school throughout the period 
of the examination. Do you come with two teachers? No. You were not informed to? Eh? Continue. No problem. God will see us. There is God. There is God in everything we are doing. Those bloods that are sharing and pronoun will answer. What of two teachers, why two teachers, two, uh, what of two teachers that can tell us that they conducted that exam? Do you come with any? Principal? No, two. You only you work at home. Okay. Now the first lady is calling you, come, I want to help you. Come to find your, your child, your missing child. Will you keep quiet? No. Chai. Chai. There is God. Oh. There is God. Oh. The blood we are sharing, there is God. Oh. 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 First Lady Patience Jonathan Hart broken at the latest discovery on the abduction of the girls from the Gubbin Secondary School in Borno State. Now, the choir state's Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed has challenged members of the National Conference to come out with resolutions that will evolve a Nigeria where new direction for growth and development will thrive. The governor made the call during the state's monthly program tagged Governor Explains. He noted that the expectations of Nigerians include new policy for better sense of hope and setting of goals and targets and how to meet them. For me, my expectations from this conference at the end of the day will be to see a conference that will be coming out such that Nigerians will have a better sense of hope. Nigerians will be seeing a new direction for growth and development. Nigerians will be seeing a new policy direction. Nigerians will be seeing an end to where we want to be as a country in mind. In other words, if this conference comes out with clearly spelled out set goals and targets, and the way and manner by which we intend to achieve those targets, then to me, would have achieved the purpose for which the conference was set in place. Otherwise, it will be like any other talk show we've had in the past. Acquire State's Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed. Now, it is estimated that there are at least 800,000 cases of vis vesicle vaginal fistula in Nigeria, caused principally by early motherhood and prolonged labor. In Kaduna State, Northwest Nigeria, most of the over 5,000 women suffering from VVF have stories of embarrassments and humiliations that they have suffered. Our community report tonight dwells on the plight of VVF patients undergoing treatment at the Hajia Gambo Sawaba Memorial Hospital in Zaria, Kaduna State. Etisola, now you talk to Inside this ward are women affected by a peculiar health challenge, vesicovaginal fistula, VVF. Vesicovaginal fistula is an occurrence of an abnormal hole between the bladder or rectum and the vagina, characterized by a continuous and uncontrollable leakage of urine. For years, they've lived with this condition with fading hopes of any cure. Yeah, yes. The story of these VVF patients at the Hajia Gambo Sawaba Hospital in Zaria is that of sadness and joy. At first, you cannot tell which one of them suffers from the ailment until you get a bit closer. First, you are hit by the stench, and then you see the tube slightly peeking out from under their wrappers and the catheter bag that accompanies them everywhere they go. 35-year-old mother of four, Grace Gajeri, said she contacted VVF after the birth of her third child, and suddenly she noticed that she could no longer control her urine and feces. 
when the thing started, before I would go to, maybe it happens uh, mostly in the morning, early hours of the morning, because it never happened to me outside, outside the home. Before, if I wake up like this and I want to urinate, if I, I don't run immediately to the bathroom, before I notice, the, this will start coming out. Even stool at times, that's uh, how it happens. Before I will run to the toilet to start coming out, so I started hiding it until when I opened up to one of my friends. She said, ah, they used to operate this thing. Why are you hiding it? It's not something that you hide. In the northern part of Nigeria, where the disease is rampant, stories bordering on divorce, rejection, isolation, and stigma as a result of the infection are common. In most cases, some sufferers confessed to being sent packing by their spouses, while others became recluses. Most of the women affected are teenage mothers who come from remote villages without health care facilities. Initially, there were always cases of uh, being abandoned by the husband, by even your relatives, by their relatives. But now, because treatment is available, most of the patients we see are being accompanied by their husbands. And throughout the period of treatment, their husbands are by their side supporting them. So this is a very good development. And that has made it much easier for them to be integrated into the society after the treatment. But this 28-year-old victim, Maria Mohammed, said her own case was due to prolonged labor as a result of the absence of a medical doctor when she was due for delivery. I can't speak because her past many pains. The problem of the doctors, they didn't serious about women because they are, is their work. When they see that is, you can't burn this baby by yourself. Let them do what they're supposed to do. They won't do it. They will leave you so far. I came to us with you. Seven, five o'clock in the morning. They say there is there is no menene menene. I should go back to home. I go back to home. Then I came back around two o'clock. They say the doctors has gone home. That I should wait till twelve o'clock in the midnight. Calling the doctors one after the other and say that there is there. According to a report released in 2012 by the National Demographic Health Survey, no fewer than 12,000 women develop VVF every year in Nigeria. This is also one of the causes of maternal mortality. After treatment, women are advised by doctors to seek proper antenatal care during pregnancy to prevent recurrence. We try to empower the women by having a rehabilitation center. After the treatment, we teach you either sewing or knitting or any other uh, skill acquisition so that by the time you go back home, sometimes we even give them seed money, about 20,000, which they will buy things they are going to use for, the, for whatever they were taught to. Fortunately, here in Kaduna, we, offer, we operate them free of charge. So we try to empower them. So coupled with the support from their husbands and the skill acquisition unit we have, that's the vocational training center we have, and the kind of empowerment that we give them. Uh, integration into society has been made much easier than before. Although the federal government said last year that it is winning the war against VVF, more sensitization has to be done if these patients at the Hajia Gambusaraba Hospital Zaria and many others across the country are to be VVF free. Tisola, now you And now to the arts. The Living Legends series is an exhibition that honors creative minds who have distinguished themselves in the arts. This time round, the honor was bestowed on Nobel laureate Wale Shoinka. He is one of Africa's finest writers with well-known works such as The Man Died, Mad Men and Specialists, and Kongi's Harvest and others, which makes strong statements on societal issues. Our tribute tonight, ex on our tribute tonight, artists explore the many angles of this veteran playwright, which has inspired their art. Change our story. Gouda, the ultimate. 
Every year, the Living Legend series honors Africa's finest. This time, Nobel laureate Wally Shoyunka's name is on, especially as he becomes a year older. Well done, congratulations. About 30 fine art students from the Moshuda Biola Polytechnic in Ogun State are armed with their sketch parts and drawing under the Watsul professional instructors. An experience their tutors believe will definitely come in handy. These works are a collection from the live painting project done in 2008 and uh, the students are here to appreciate the different art techniques and styles which uh, will be later demonstrated to them and to show to them uh, all the different uh, forms of expression by the different artists. Every artist has a way of expressing his own style. So students have gone around, they've seen different styles, different mediums, some watercolor, some charcoal, some pastel. So because they are still very fresh, this is their first uh, semester in arts. So they need that exposure. So that's why I bring them down here for them to see the art himself and then to meet people. Especially for a man who is passionate about impacting the next generation. We selected Wally Shrenka as the face of the project because we recognized the similarities in the ideals that we share. He ha has the same beliefs we do. He believes in the youth as the future of the world. We believe in the youths. This program is actually targeted at the youths because we feel they are our future. He has always been known to encourage the youths in painting and in writing and as a poet as well. So we felt that it would be a very good uh, tribute uh, to have an exhibition held in his honor at, as part of the celebration for his birthday. The Ogun State Cultural Center, Kuto, becomes a beehive of activities as art enthusiasts see different angles of this literary icon. Walesha Inka has always been an exciting muse for artists. His bushy grey hair and other features fascinate them. When I hear the name WS, I think of a global, larger-than-life icon who believes in fairness, equity, dignity, and justice. I see him as somebody that gives us a lot of hope and makes us uh, appreciate our culture especially what we represent and also as an Ogun indigen he's somebody that we can all look up to and we can continue to encourage and transfer to the younger generation the heritage that we have this range of works from paintings to sculptures show artists sticking to their comfort zones while still keeping their gaze on him if you drive along the streets of uh, major cities in nigeria you see portraits of shrinka being painted by some road, road sign uh, art it's roadside artist you go to institutions, you see people doing his portraits. So it's to tell you how they celebrate uh, the man. The project is to document and celebrate distinguished Nigerians that have contributed positively to this country and beyond. Professor Yusuf Grillo, Dr. Bruce Onobra Kwea, and Professor J.P. Clark Bekederemo have all been featured on the show. When you get tired of hearing your own name, then we will change our story. Gouda, the ultimate. Still ahead on the news at 10, pro-Russian activists have attacked the police headquarters in Ukraine, forcing the release of several people held over deadly violence two days ago. That's on the foreign scene. Please join us again.